Merrimack County. So you're using some of the coldest weather of the year so far. Um, what are you doing to make sure the people in the Merrimack Valley are staying warm? Are you going to be there for the next couple of days at all? Yeah, I'm, um, I'm expecting to be up there this weekend. Um, and obviously we talk every day to the local officials and the folks at Columbia about what's going on. Um, we have hundreds of RVs uh, on site in South Lawrence and in North Andover and Andover for families that um, are looking for a place to go uh, with respect to the changing nature of the weather. Um, we have thousands of hotel rooms uh, that we've reserved and are available to people. Uh, if they want to pursue those, and those hotel rooms also come with uh, contracts that have been negotiated with both Uber and Lyft to help people get to where they need to go. If they go to one of those hotel, hotel rooms, we also have apartments that are available uh, to people in those communities that are uh, vacant, furnished, and available. And, uh, and we've made very clear to all of our folks on the ground, the municipal folks we work with, the shelter people we work with, everybody, uh, that we have available housing resources for people if they need to get warm and to stay warm. It's one of the reasons why we focused early on on making sure that some of the folks who prepare a lot of hot meals got their power back early so they'd be in a position to provide those to folks in the community. But this is obviously, as the weather starts to turn, a very significant concern for us. And we've put a lot of capacity in place to support them, and, uh, and they're only a phone call away. Thanks, so guys. legislators are concerned Last that uh, right your administration should take more responsibility for the explosions. Uh, what would you say to that? Well, the first thing I'd say is that um, I went up there the night of the explosions and I basically stayed there for the next four days to both assist the National Transportation Safety Bureau as they began their investigation into what actually happened, but also to make sure we did everything we could in the short term to make sure we got people's electricity back on, which we did, that their homes and their businesses were safe, which they were, and then began to put in place a recovery plan to get everybody's heat and hot water back on. We're in the midst of implementing that plan, and I believe that plan, um, block by block, day by day, is getting closer and closer to getting people back into what I would describe the state of normalcy that they're in before. Thanks, everybody. Are you satisfied with? Sorry, are you satisfied with the level of state oversight on the natural gas infrastructure before the explosion? Well, we did more inspections in 2017 than any time in the previous five or six years. Um, and obviously we're cooperating with the NTSB to make sure everybody knows and understands exactly what happened uh, in the Merrimack Valley. But the DPU also put out um, a procurement to get a, an independent firm uh, to come in and do a top-to-bottom analysis of all of our pipeline infrastructure and all of the policies and procedures and practices that are in place uh, to ensure that it's safe. Um, and then based on the results of that, we'll be issuing orders to people to make investments in places where they have concerns, which is exactly what I think they should be. Thanks. Columbia owes the people of the Merrimack Valley the ability to get back to normal. And that means reimbursing, as they said they would, for all of the elements associated with dealing with that, whether it's a hot water heater, a stove, a boiler, a furnace, whatever it happens to be, they're going to be on the hook for that. We're going to make sure that they are. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Thank Thanks. You. Very nice.